morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you, family. God, welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother, DJ Sam Rock. It's good to see you. It's good to have you. It's good to know that we're loved by God, that God promises a lot of things, and he cashes in literally on those promises, and we get the benefit. I love God because what he says is not for us, and what he forces is not against us. It's against the enemy. He'll force the enemy away out of our lives. He'll force the enemies to stop talking, to speaking to us, right? He'll stop the enemy from his ways of tactics or tactical ways of um, trying to destroy us. God will force his way against the enemy, but he will never force his way into any single person. God is an awesome God. He's a mighty God, yet he has a gentle spirit. Don't ask me to explain that. So God is good. Uh, it's Friday too. A lot of people say Friday, but it's Friday. Um, Fridays have been drastically changed since last year's pandemic and all that stuff. So Fridays don't look the same, um, but it's a new day. And God still creates days. Every day is a new day by God. Amen. He created the day. He created the time. He created this space, this place. He created a purpose and plan for your life and for my life. And we're all originals. We're not copies. We're not carbon copies of anything. There's not another me. There's not another you. So every time God promises you something, amen, that promise was specifically designed for you. It's like exclusive. It's like handmade. You could trust God's word. So we're going to get into this whole idea of God repaying us. God repaying us. When we give up something for the sake of the Lord, when we give up something for the sake of God, by way of Holy Spirit, God will repay. That's why I believe that I don't worry about you know financial stuff anymore. I haven't worried about that for years. Why? Because God promised me that he will be with me. He will never fail me. He will never forsake me. And he'll promise you the same thing if you if you trust in him. It's a matter of trust. This is a trust issue. It's not a religious, a religious issue. It's a trust issue. Amen? A trust issue. And let me just make sure we're up and running because you know how it is. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Sometimes uh, I get excited and I forget to check things. Amen. So we're here live on the socials, also on the podcast. Welcome to all my podcasters, the podcast listeners, and also Soul Winners with a Z.org. That's the main hub for everything that I do um, pretty much in media. It's Soul Winners with a Z.org. It's called a Sellout Radio Network, and I have a player that plays 24-7, and whoa, it is active. It is active. Oh, glory to God. That player is off the charts. I had to even upgrade um, my whole subscription because I had too many listeners for too many hours and it crashed the player. But thank God that he provides every single need. Amen. I'm, and I'm trying to just be a part of what God has said over this ministry. I just want to be a part of it. That he says he's going to reach more people with the gospel message through this ministry than since it started. Totally since it started. Amen. And wow. When I look at the numbers, I'm like, okay, God. Only you, because not everybody's coming to listen to me. It's only for your glory. Amen. And God will get it. That's an amazing thing. So what God promised you, he will complete. He will fulfill his promise over your life. I guarantee it. He guarantees it. Good morning, Brother Damien. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo, my friend, my bro. Amen. So God will repay. And if you don't think so, um, I'm going to prove it. I'm going to try my best to prove it. Amen. If you give up valuable things for God, he himself will repay us. He will repay us. And what does that mean? Does that mean that, listen, uh, I'm going to do this so that way God could pay me for something? No, it's not like that. He will repay you for the sacrifice that you, you know, you sacrifice something for God. Amen. He will repay you. You give to the poor. The Bible says he himself will repay you. And the opposite applies. Those who take away from the poor, God will deal with those people too. And it's going to be a repayment, but it's not going to be a repayment that's good. So we have to be careful with our choices. Um, in the kingdom of God, there is no homelessness in the kingdom of God. There is no lack in the kingdom of God. Um, there is no you know, bankruptcy in the kingdom of God. It's only prosperity, a victory, financial victory, financial breakthrough, health, prosperity, wellness. All of that is in the kingdom of God. And last time I checked, when I read about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is inside of us. Amen. The kingdom of God is near. So, Holy Spirit God, next level things happen. Happening by Holy Spirit God. 
We have we have three and one, man. We have we have the good stuff. We have the prize. We have the possession that people are denying or restricting themselves from, but we have it. Amen. Open your hearts, open your mind, receive the Lord. God bless you, Sister Joyce. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So God will repay us this Friday on the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. And one of the scriptures that we're going to be reading is the really the whole, um, a lot of portions of Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, because we want to hear what the Lord has to say about this. If we give up valuable things for God, he will repay us. Interesting, right? He himself will repay us. And God owns it all. So his his bank account is ginormous. He never runs out of prosperity, never runs out of love, never runs out of power, never runs out of promises. God is that big of a God. Amen. That he can do exactly what he said he can do in your life and everyone's life who calls upon the name of the Lord to be saved and rescued. Why wouldn't you want this promise? Why wouldn't you want prosperity, true prosperity, biblical prosperity? Why wouldn't you want it? Uh, yesterday I was looking through some posts and um, I just realized I don't have my um, thing on. Let me just change my audio. Well, I'll do that. I'll do that um, afterwards. So, and I was looking through some postings, just to, just to say that social, and I was just wondering about some people I haven't seen in a long time in church or in life in general. I realized something. It was like, man, uh, I realized that they were doing their own thing. Like these people used to be on fire for God. But now they're doing their own thing and they're taking pictures of it. And it's like they exchanged the new life and went back to the old life. And then they go on social media and they try to make it look like it's fun. And I'm like, wow. Uh, I look at it now, the same things I used to do before I look at it now, I'll be like, yo, um, that's not fun. That's not cool. My bro, Jet Dread, is that Dread? What's up, Ed? Good. What's going on, bro? Good morning. Much blessings to you, my friend and my bro. God bless you, man. And um, yeah, and I looked at it, I'm like, man, that's crazy. That's crazy how things change, man. So don't exchange the new life for the old life. It's not fun. It's actually um, going backwards. And at this point in life, I don't want to go backwards. You know what I mean? A little too old for that. But I understand the struggle. And I understand the temptation from going from the new life to the old life. But the old life always wants to drag us back, right? The old ways, the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, the devil, the world. It's like a gravitational thing. It tries to pull us in. It's like it's like if you're in a spaceship. I watch a lot of um, sci-fi, and you're you're in a spaceship. And I think I was watching Alien. I fell asleep last night. I was watching Aliens, one of the parts of Aliens. I'm old school, so I watch Aliens um, with Sigourney Weaver. And they were trying to get some of the aliens out off the ship. So they broke a hole in, in the in the ship, and it's a gravitational pull that pulls them out, like powerful pull. Sometimes the world is, feels like that, like a gravitational pull, and it's serious, man. It's serious. Uh, so let me let me give us all a minute. I gotta turn on my. I didn't turn on my mic. I'm bugging. I didn't never turn on my mic. So what you're hearing is audio from my computer. And you know how I feel about audio, so I want to put on my mic. But let me give us all a minute to share this out. If you know somebody right now that you're thinking about, I said they could really be blessed by this. They could be really blessed by this morning Devo. Then you can send them to soulwinnerswithaz.org. Right there on the front page, they can see the video, or they could just press play on the podcast, and they'll be right here with us. Amen. And I'm going to have to turn this on because I have to put the background music for my podcast. So give you a minute. And we'll be right back.
That minute, man, is crazy. I didn't even get to share it all. That is crazy, crazy, crazy. Crazy stuff, man. Crazy stuff. Amen. So, let me switch this over to... Uh-oh. Well, I can't do it on my podcast. So, my podcast people apologize for the uh, unusual audio. Um, but we're going to run with it. Can't change it now. Um, but I know on the, on the live, it, the sound is much better. Hopefully. Let me see. Let's see. Before I start boasting about it, right? Let me just make sure. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't turn on the mic. See, I'm a rookie still. Things still happen. Let me make sure the audio is good, all right? Sound is much better. Yep, we good. So we're going to be in Matthew chapter, what did I say? Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Um, so a quick background, quick comment about Matthew 19. Some people think that serving the Lord will automatically lead to material prosperity here and now. Here and now. And I want prosperity here and now. What about you? Like, let's be honest. I want it now. But me serving the Lord doesn't mean I'm going to get material prosperity here and now. I'm not going to be multi-millionaire and all that because I serve the Lord. Serving the Lord means you're you're on the right path for sure. You have eternal life. You're not going to hell. You're not hell bound. You're heaven bound. And you're making moves. And trust me, the moves that God allows us to make are mind-blowing. And sometimes it hasn't. It has nothing to do with money or prosperity or anything like that or wealth. It has everything to do about winning a soul to the kingdom of God. Using people, ordinary people, an extraordinary God, using the ordinary people, right, to bring them to a kingdom. To bring them to meet the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Of Nazareth. So some people think, oh, I serve the Lord, so automatically. Mm. And that's where this whole um, prosperity gospel comes from. They say, oh, just name it and claim it. It's yours. God owns it all. Yes, God does own it all. But it's up to him whether he wants to divvy out his riches, right, to every single one of us. So it's up to God. It's not up to, if it was up to me, yeah, of course. You know, I'll, you know, divvy up all the wealth that the Lord gives me. He gives me millions and millions of dollars. I'm going to give away millions and millions of dollars. There's needs to be met around my own community, my own family. Uh, my own neighborhood, my own church, my own city, my own state, my own nation, and the world. This needs to go around for everybody. Jesus nowhere promises, check this out, Jesus nowhere promises that this will be the case. That because we serve him, like you know, you never hear Jesus say, okay, come follow me and I'll give you like all the money you want in the world. Now God the Father, um, through the Old Testament, told um, Solomon, he asked Solomon, what do you want? Solomon, Solomon asked for wisdom and because Solomon asked for wisdom. God gave him the wisdom to gain wealth and to be wealthy and gave him all this wisdom. And with that wisdom came a lot of financial prosperity. But if you look deep into Solomon, you never have to look that deep into his life. Um, it wasn't what he expected. Because he still couldn't stop certain things in his life from happening in his life. Almost like bad habits. So, fast forward, New Testament, New Covenant. Jesus said, just come follow me. Believe and trust in me and you will live. You will have that born again experience. You will have the resurrected life. Nowhere did Jesus promise that we will have material prosperity here and now if we follow him. There's examples of people, like I mentioned Solomon, who received material blessings in the scriptures, Old and New Testament. God is able to give us anything. Obviously, he owns everything. He's able to divvy out everything or anything he wants to give us. That's a given, but he doesn't have to. That's the whole thing. That's mind-blowing. God doesn't even have to give me the next breath in my lungs. He doesn't have to prove himself to me anymore. He doesn't have to um, explain himself to me. He chooses to. If he if he wants to, he will. But everything that God wants for our lives are good. Everything that God knows that we need are covered. Our needs are covered. Our wants, you know, it's not it's not uh, it's not a guarantee that what I want I'm going to get because I'm a servant of the Lord. 
what I need, I'm going to get because I'm a servant of the Lord. There's a difference between needs and wants. So biblical blessing is primarily focused on the relationship one has with God, G-O-D, Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach, El Shalom, El Shaddai, right? Jehovah Jireh, the provider, right? It's blessings that are primarily focused, right? I'm trying to get this right in my mind. Primarily focused on our relationship with God. It's focused on that, not focused on the material things. Okay, and spiritual blessings are far more important than money, gold, or silver. Now, this you could give me all the money in this whole entire planet. I won't exchange that for the peace that I have with God and the peace of God in my life. I'm sorry. I've met millionaires. You've heard this story if you've been following me. I've met millionaires that are miserable. And it blew my mind the first time I met a miserable millionaire. So why are you miserable, man? You have all the money you need. Houses, possessions, wife, kids. You can do anything you want. And you're miserable? That was an eye-opener for me when I first met a millionaire complaining and a miserable millionaire. I've met other millionaires that are happy. They're born again, right? And they're givers. I've met them personally. But then I met other millionaires that don't have Christ. But they have possessions and they're miserable. Mind-blowing, man. I, I, I never thought that that would be possible. So for you to have everything financially and still be miserable. I'd rather be broke with the peace of God, which I will never be broke if I have Jesus, but get my example. I'd rather be broke and have the peace of God than rich and be miserable and don't have peace. What, what, what would it matter? That's why the, the scripture says, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Nothing. It won't profit. It won't. It won't profit you anything, man. So let's go to the scripture. I want to start preaching. Matthew nineteen, verse twenty-three. Jesus said to his disciples. So we might as well open up our ears if we trust and we believe in the Lord. We're his disciples. I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, it is difficult for a rich man who clings to possessions and status as security to enter the kingdom of God. That's what God meant. That's what Jesus meant. It's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God because he's still holding on to his possessions, status, and security. Money is a rich man's God, for the most part, to enter the kingdom of heaven. Verse 24, again, I tell you, this is the Lord speaking, and he's saying, again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man who places his faith in wealth and status to enter the kingdom of God. So the point that Jesus is making is not a camel going into a little threading needle. Um, you know, if you do the background check on what that meant, research what that meant for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Um, some theologians say that, you know, the hump on a camel's back, uh, you have to get on all four and try to go under some uh, way of an eye of a needle, like a pathway. Um, some people take it literally and um, call this hyperbole, saying that Jesus is making uh, an, uh, an example that's hyperbole, like exaggerated example of a big, big old camel, humpback camel going through a little needle. Either way, the point goes that whoever places their faith in wealth and status, it's going to be hard for you and for me if we're acting that way to get into the kingdom of God. Because we can't serve two masters. It's either God the master, the Lord Jesus the master, or money. It's going to be a master. You know, last time I checked, money is a horrible master anyway. But money is an excellent slave. Excellent slave. Verse 25, when the disciples heard this, they were completely astonished and bewildered. The same way I was astonished and bewildered when I saw rich people miserable. Saying, then who can be saved? Right? Because they figured if a rich man has all of those possessions, then who can be saved then? And it's so hard for a rich man to get into heaven. The disciples were, I always said the same thing. So, man, who, how you get saved? Who could be saved then? But Jesus looked at them and said, With people, as far it depends on them, 
it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So when the, when the disciples asked them, who can be saved from the wrath of God, they meant. Because they figured, okay, if they ain't getting into the kingdom of God, then they're going to feel the wrath of God. So who can save, who can be saved, right, from the wrath of God? Well, Jesus said, with people, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. In other words, God, if you go to God, right, with all your ideas, all your possessions, all your wealth, and you give them to him for the sake of God, for the sake of being in the kingdom, he will repay us. Verse 27, then Peter answered him saying, look, we have given up everything and followed you, becoming your disciples and accepting you as teacher and Lord. What then will there be for us? Great question, Peter. I would ask the same thing. Look, man, we, we gave up everything. Family, friends, right? Um, the club life, weed, alcohol, everything. I gave it all up for you, Lord. What, what's in it for me now? Am I just going to be like a religious zealot or a lame, you know, church guy or something like that? You know, a boring dude. Like, what's going to happen? Like, I'm going to lose all my fun. Because a lot of people think that when you come into the kingdom of God, that when you get saved, you're going to lose all your fun. Listen, I'm having the most fun I ever had in my whole entire life. Sober. Sober. I did I did everything else. I did everything else. Uh, I have witnesses. They saw me do everything else. But on this side, listen, man, I haven't been more happier, more fulfilled in my whole entire life. You can say what you want, but I'm I'm blessed. Brother Gino, God bless you. Blessings, brother. Blessings. Blessing question at your earliest convenience. But as people, do we tend to put earthly contingencies or rules or stipulations on our heavenly blessings? Is this or can this be an issue of obedience on our part? Um, some people put blessing, prosperity gospel, for instance, Brother Gino. Um, they say we have it all. We do. That's true. But they, they try to make it seem like because we have the Lord Jesus, then we could ask for anything. And they try to bend a little bit. I call it reaching. They try to reach a little bit on the scripture where Jesus said, ask anything in my name and you will get it. What well, is a lot more involved than that. But at face value, face value, that's what it says. And they take that and they figure, well, if I ask Jesus anything I want, I want I'm going to get it. So let me ask for cars, boats, helicopters, planes and all that. And sometimes it seems like they're getting it, but they're not getting it because God is giving it. They're getting it because they've done things, lined things up for prosperity. You know, maybe ministry, maybe businesses, and they're they're already in the kingdom of God. So what's happening is they're confusing the things that they're getting that they want it. They're confusing that for an open window of God's blessing. Um, uh, our heavenly blessings, um, God says to store up our treasure in heaven where no one could go and steal no rust could get to it no moth no, nothing can get to the riches in heaven but here yeah god god wants us to prosper as our soul prospers because he's a soul winner right um it could be an issue of obedience for sure uh, on our part because god um it's weird god doesn't have to obey us he's not a genie in a bottle um, so he's not going to, we're not going to rub the scripture, not going to rub the Bible, right? And, and act like it's a, you going to rub the Bible and say, okay, the, and Jesus pops out and says, okay, master, what do you want? And all that stuff. He's not going to do that. Um, so God is obedient to his own word. And, but if we're obedient to God's word, if we're obedient to God's words, then his word, then we're in a position to receive what the Lord says we're going to get. And last time I checked, if you, if you just read the red, you know, the New Testament, everything that Jesus said, amen, uh, that's enough to take us from here to eternal, eternity with prosperity. Thank you for the question. I hope I try. I know I dodged around a little bit, but um, it's a good question. I hope I answered it somewhat. Amen. So we have Peter said, look, <laughs> I love Peter. He said, look, man, we gave up everything. We gave up everything, followed you. We became your disciples. We accepted, accepted you as Lord and teacher. What then will there be for us? Right? 
You ever ask God that? Like, man, um, God, what's going on? Like, how am I in this position right now where I gave so much for your kingdom, for your people, sacrificed this, that, and the third? You know, I've been there a couple of times, to be honest. Like, I'm like, okay, uh, I just emptied out this uh, for this situation that there was a need. But I didn't have to wait. This is just me and my testimony. I don't, I don't put my trust in possessions. I'm telling you, everybody who knows me, who really knows me, knows that. There's uh some people look at me weird because they think I'm all about money. I've been told in my face, oh, it's all about money with you. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. You don't even know me. Like that's weird. Uh, I had a uh, a man of God even tell me that years ago. He says, just you just all about money. I'm like, man, if that was the case, I wouldn't be doing anything free, right? I mean, it, it was so weird to hear that. When all through the valley, Lehigh Valley, where I'm from, um, a lot of pastors will tell you, oh, no, he's done this, that, and a third for me for zero. It's just that I started noticing uh, in certain communities that they were taking advantage of the free and asking for a whole lot of things. And not, and they were not willing to bless. And it wasn't really for me. It was for my helpers, you know, for people. Uh, and I was like, nah, that's not fair for the people I'm bringing that's, you know, young in the faith, number one. And they want to see the blessings of the Lord and they want to see how the kingdom of God operates. And when I started noticing that people were just freebie, 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 I'm like, nah. Like when literally when I get a gift from a man or a woman of God, I'm always saying, hey, how could I, you know, pay? And sometimes it's, and don't, don't worry about it. It's not that I'm worried about it. I just know that if they're sacrificially giving uh, I want to be a part of the blessing to give back. Amen. So I stopped the free things and um, now I get less um, requests, but it's all good. At least people know that from the beginning to now that I'm always willing to serve. It's not all about money over here. If it was, then you would know about it. <laughs> you would definitely know about it. Good morning, Sister Lissette. Good morning. Amen. Blessings to you. So. So Peter says, listen, we gave up everything. What's in it for us? Jesus said to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you in the renewal, that is the messianic restoration and regeneration of all things. When everything's made new, right? When the son of man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me becoming my disciples will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, listen to this, everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or farms for my name's sake will receive many times as much and will inherit eternal life. That's above and above and be above what we could ever imagine or think for, um, think of. But many who are first in this world will be last. In the world to come and the last first the kingdom of God, Jesus, when he speaks kingdom, it doesn't operate like the world kingdom. It's opposite. I want to be first. I want to be first. The people in the world say, I want to be the greatest. I want to be the best. I want to be first. And you say, OK, uh, in this world, you could be first. But in the kingdom of God, that's not necessarily true. Amen. God sees every single sacrifice we make. And if we make it with a heart that's just to serve. Like, I've seen people, man. I'm telling you, I know people that just serve, man. They serve and, and they give whenever they can. They'll, they'll empty out their account. They'll take the, the shirt off their back for some other people. And I've seen them live a blessed life because they do it without. It's not forced. It's who they are. And they are so blessed. No sickness comes to their lives. No disease. Family is good. Children are blessed and growing in the faith. I'm telling you. You don't have to force it, man. Just be the servant of the Lord. Now, God will repay. And it's not to be, you know, trying. People try to play games with God as if they can. It's not that they're playing games with God. It's that they're trying to fool people. Because God is not fooled. He, he, we can't trick God. But some people could be tricked or deceived and make other people believe that they got certain things because God gave it to them. If, if I could do something, let me make myself clear. If I could do something on my own, I don't need God to do it for me. Isn't that, doesn't that make sense? Oh, God, I need $1,000. Well, I think I could do that on my own, right? Oh, God, I need $10 million. Well, now we're talking. 
Now, now God could step in and be like, okay, no problem. For God, it's no problem. But what is the need for? And he's going to, he already knows what your heart is, you know, bent on thinking about 10 million. But what is the need for? And then God will evaluate that. And the blessings will come um, if he, if it's lined, if we're lined up with God's will and purpose for our lives. So, nevertheless, right? Spiritual blessings are far more important than money, gold, or silver. We already established that. We know that. And if you're a born-again believer, you should start to realize that, right? Nevertheless, Jesus promised us that he will repay us for everything we give up for his sake. Everything. It's not going to be in vain. Um, you went without so somebody else could have something. We go without so somebody could be with. Uh, we might get into a situation, and I'm not talking about getting into debt. I'm talking about sacrificial giving. You have $20 in your pocket before payday or whatever the situation, and somebody needed $18 for groceries or whatever, and you're going to stay with two. Do you realize God could use that $2 and make it into $2 million? If God is the one that's doing the repaying for the sacrifice, amen, why are we worrying? I wouldn't worry about it. I haven't worried about, my, about money since I was a teenager. It's never no worry. I've seen lack. I lived in lack, but my parents never showed that we was going to lose. My parents showed me that we can win with the little that we have. I love my mom. She said, we're going to make this dollar stretch. And my dad said, well, I'll go to the, you know, they were a good team when it came to getting stuff for their kids. Uh, I'll go to the bodega and get credit, you know, credit, you know what I'm saying? That you would get something in, a, in like Monday, Tuesday, and they would give you the groceries or whatever at the bodega. And then, you you know, you show up Friday and it was all through handshakes and trusting. Uh, I don't know if they would threaten my dad, say, OK, if you don't come back, we're going to do something. But my dad always um, handled his business. So when he got paid, he would go pay the store owner and he was real grateful and humble about it. So we were never in lack of food or anything like that. So what little we had, I seen my parents uh, get it done. So I've never, I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not lying, exaggerating. I never worried about money. I've known people who worry, worry, worry about money. And I try to bring like balance to that. I'm like, listen, don't worry. God got us, you know, don't worry about it. Um, and every single case, I can tell you a million stories how God came through financially for us and my family, me and my family. Every single time. It's like he has no losses. God has no losses when it comes to financial breakthrough and prosperity. His way of prosperity. So nevertheless, Jesus promises that he will repay us for everything we give up for his sake. Both family relationships and material possessions can suffer from our devotion to the Lord. That's why I always think about missionaries. That they sacrifice everything. They leave family sometimes, man. And they go and spread the gospel message to remote places of the earth that there's no hot water there's no running water period right um they got what they get you know they have what they came or they went with and that's it now they're going to rely on the holy spirit god and they rely on the word of god and they get to trust god to provide every single need as they're like on the remote parts of the world man much respect to a missionary and then i've seen with my own two eyes situations that missionaries have come back I'm not going to mention, I don't mention nothing. God knows what I'm talking about. They've come back and they treat them like you're a, a war veteran. They forget about it. Like veterans, sometimes they, we forget about the people who died for our country. They, they, they go to war, they come back, they can't even get a job. Um, I've seen certain situations similar to that with missionaries that come back after years on the missionary field, come back and they, you know, they release them. They take the budget from them. They, don't, they can't. They have to live with um, family members. It's crazy. But God sees that and God will repay the missionaries. Amen. That are treated like that. I'm not saying they all get treated like that when they come back. I'm saying in my situations where I've seen with my own two eyes and I know people, uh, that happened. So missionaries who leave their loved ones to spread the gospel, right? Or think of believers who are persecuted for their faith. Like literally persecuted, not like just told to be quiet and go, to, uh, you know, away. Not just, oh, we're going to shut down your church. Not I'm talking about persecuted, like losing their lives for the sake of the gospel. God will repay them. In other words, uh, he'll take them, you know, with him and he'll repay their family. 
like they'll inherit the blessings of the Lord upon their family. It's all through the scriptures. Um, Joseph, right? He had a, a, a bad situation. His own brothers sold him into slavery. And they were hating on him because he had the, you know, the favor of their dad. And he shared a dream that I think he should not share it with them. He prematurely shared it. But anyway, God was with him all through. In prison, uh, he got accused by Pharaoh's uh, wife uh, of you know trying to get with her sexually and all that. He was all of that, but God was still with him. He was accused of all that. God was still with him. He had an opportunity to pay his family back, pay his brothers back. You know, the land went into famine. They came and saw Joseph. They didn't recognize him because now he's like second in charge of all of um, the land. And he didn't repay them evil for evil. He told them, listen, what the enemy meant, what you guys meant for evil, God turned around for good. And he had the opportunity to be a blessing. God will repay you and your family for your sacrifice. No matter if they wronged you or not, said, I've been wronged. How about you? I'm not gonna. It's not gonna be eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. It's not gonna be evil for evil. I'm gonna overcome evil with good, and God will make sure He will pay us with good things, so that way we can bless others, not curse others. So, the cost of faithful discipleship can be high. Of course, if you're a believer, you know that we've already sacrificed a lot of things in life. That caused other people to abandon us or throw us out or not even talk to us no more. Like some people just won't even deal with us no more because we're Christian. But Jesus assures us that it's all worth it, man. It's all worth it. I know in my life it was worth it. When I moved from Brooklyn, New York to PA, it was a setup. God set me up. Like I look back, I said, only God could do that. Only God could take me from uh, a city where everything was popping and, and, you know, I had lots of friends. You know, I, I would never rest my head in a place where I wasn't welcome. Amen. And I had a lot of Brooklyn love. Just put it like that. And a lot of Midtown love, a lot of Uptown love. Amen. A lot of Queens love. I had the boroughs, man. A lot of Bronx love. Right. I, um, Staten Island until my brother moved out there. I wouldn't have had no love in Staten Island, but you know what I mean. Like there would have been no, it would have been easy for me to develop a way of spending my rest, spending the rest of my life there. But situation that happened, long story short, I moved to PA. I was like, what in the world am I doing out here? And I moved out here with my boy Mid. He said, I'll, I'll go out there with you, man, because some of us just want to change. Wanted to get out, wanted to get out, see, see how I was on the other side. He went back, I stood, and it was a setup. Like literal setup. I got saved here, born again here. I got married here, had children here. Amen. Although I already had a son in New York. Amen. I'm, and he's a blessing in my life. Very proud of him. Amen. He already gave me a grandchild and another one on the way. And uh, I'm like, okay, but it was a setup. Had I stayed and been stubborn and just stayed in, it would have been a bad situation anyway. So I thank God that he set me up. So, Jesus assures us, he promises us, that would be all worth it. His children will inherit eternal life and receive a hundredfold of all they sacrifice for Jesus' sake. So I'm leaving a footprint and an inheritance for my children, whether they know it or not. Because I'm going to give everything I have to serve the God that has it all. I'm going to empty myself out and God is going to pour out. So... Every time I empty myself out sacrificially, every time you empty yourself out sacrificially, God will repay. He will repay us for every single thing that we've ever done to sacrifice in the, for the sake of Jesus, for the sake of the Lord, for the sake of the kingdom of God. He will repay us. So is there anything you had to give up when you became a Christian or when you answered God's call on your life? Do you remember anything that you had to give up? I could tell you a lot of things, but we're running out of time here. But think about it. Is there anything you had to give up when you became a Christian? What did you have to give up? I had to give up a lot of things, but it was worth it. Worth every part of it. And the only, only problem that I had giving up things, to be honest, was the flesh. The flesh wanted to keep things 
And God said, you might as well get rid of that because that's not of me first and foremost. It's not going to benefit you, number two. And that has to die. Um, we have to come to life, born again situation, right? We live because Christ lives. We have because Christ gives, right? So we prosper because God owns everything. He gives all good gifts to children, to his children. God doesn't give us bad gifts. And He, when he repays us, it's beyond money, silver and gold, right? It's beyond that. It's beyond worldly possessions. Amen? Um, you could be free for cancer. That will be your repayment. Um, you're, you could be uh, set free from an addiction. That is, you, would be your repayment. Amen. What we sacrifice for God, for his sake, Jesus will repay us. When we give up valuable things for God, Jesus will repay us. It's his promise. Matthew, what did we read? Matthew 19. Check it out for yourself if you don't believe me. And let the Lord speak to you about this issue. Amen. So it's Friday. I promise you that Fridays we're going to be talking about prosperity, God's way, biblical prosperity, wellness, health. All those things to set up for the weekend. Because the weekend sometimes, like if you're on a wellness and health program and you have everything lined up, you, sometimes on the weekend you could be more of a struggle because we loosen up. At least I loosen up a little bit more on the weekends because I have less uh, responsibilities outside, right? Um, so, and Sunday I worship God through service, through, through giving and all that. So that's not something on my to-do list. That's something that I do and it's someone it's something that you know just goes with who I am servant of the Lord, more servant of the Lord the most high God amen so I hope you were blessed I hope you understand Gino thank you for your question earlier I hope you um I hope I answered it I know I dodged around a couple of things because um contingencies I don't even I don't even know what that means my bro uh, my vocabulary is not that high man I know you're smarter than me for sure amen um but I hope I got it I hope I got the message across. Jesus will repay us. God will repay us for every single thing that we've sacrificed. And we don't do it because of that. We do it because we have a servant heart. And, amen. And God will handle the rest. So if we give up valuable things for God, he will repay us. He will repay us. Amen. And if we give up valuable things for God, he will repay us. Amen. God will repay us. So that's an amazing concept. It's mind blowing right now. I'm thinking about a lot of questions that I have. Uh, amen. I'll just take that up with the Lord and we get off of the of the live. So God bless you all. God keep you all. Remember always that God's good. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next time, Lord willing. And remember, God is good. And you will achieve if you believe in the Lord. Whatever God tells you you can do, you can. And whoever God says you are, whatever God says you are, you are. Amen. When he calls your name, respond to the Lord. Amen. You'll be blessed forever, forever blessed. Peace. Thank you.